Good morning from sunny Greece. I am Dr. Othonos. We are continuing the e-learning project, the homeopathy, homeopathy lessons of the Homeopathic Academy about the classical miasmatic constitutional homeopathy. This is the lesson 17th and we are going to talk about the constitution phosphor. It's a very frequent uh, and uh, very useful chronic constitution and nowadays it is even more common because of the uh, conditions that we live in. What do, we mean, what do I mean by that? It has to do with the autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system is put under a lot of stress nowadays due to the very quick and anxious way of life that we live in, especially in big towns. And uh, we have symptoms that arise from the uh, neurovegetative or autonomic nervous system what we call neurovegetative symptoms. That is, we have uh, fears, uh, we have uh, several uh, uh, symptoms like I'm feeling my heart ticking or stopping and then ticking or fluttering. Uh, I have a some kind of pains that come that go from here there and then from there here is it my heart uh, i have a headache i have tension i have um, dizziness i have several queer pains in my uh, abdomen uh, numbness uh, some kind of restlessness and all these symptoms that have s certain characteristics. We will talk about three different uh, groups of symptoms. We have the nervous symptoms we have the neurovegetative symptoms and the hysterical symptoms We have to discriminate because according to the kind of symptoms, of mental symptoms that we have, we must try and search in different uh, constitutional families. If we have intense and many nervous symptoms, we will search in nervous constitutions. If we have many and intense neurovegetative symptoms, we must search for our diagnosis in neurovegetative constitutions. And if we have hysterical symptoms, we have to search for hysterical constitutions. When we talk about nervous system, symptoms, we may have uh, many constitutions, 
like natrum moriaticum, nux vomica, um, Neurovegetative symptoms, we have phosphor, argentum nitricum, arsenicum. When we talk about hysterical symptoms, we also have, we have uh, moscus, lilium tigrinum, Asafoetita, Simisifuga. The nervous symptoms we can also find in Ignatia. There are also other constitutions that have nervous symptoms, but I write down those that have the greater the most characteristic ones, also according to in neurovegetative symptoms. What are the differences? When we've got neurovegetative symptoms, we have uh, psychosomatic symptoms, accompanied with, uh, uh, most of the times we have something that happened, a vexation, uh, a great vexation or chronic stress. that precedes the appearance of neurovegetative symptoms. And then we have symptoms that are accompanied by fear about health, fear about illness, fear of illness, great fear of illness, or of death. And these symptoms are not stable, they go, are not, not typical. The person that has these symptoms is not pretending. is really suffering. There is no... Uh, uh, it is not, not, not deliberate. Not deliberate. When we have hysterical symptoms, they are also psychosomatic. We may have vexations, we don't so much have fear of illness or death, we may have or not, there are very strange and greatly not typical all kinds of symptoms changing all the time and the most great criteria is that the person is deliberate Faking. 
in order to achieve what he wants. I have this and that. Don't uh, push me. Do things my way in order not to have these symptoms. And these symptoms happen in front of others and especially in front of those that the person wants to manipulate. And we have to do with syphilitic constitutions, syphilitic individuals. So, the differential diagnosis between hysterical symptoms and neurovegetative symptom, symptoms is that we have syphilitic background, deliberate action, faking at some degree, more or less. It, they happen in front of others and they change all the time. They are very, uh, they are not at all typical. While the neurovegetative symptoms may happen from uh, mainly psoric individuals but also from syphilitic psoric syphilitic background not a deliberate action the person is really suffering and really believes that he's got some great some severe pathology and he is afraid of illness and of death. When we go to the nervous sim symptoms, we usually have to do with, we have, these are psychosomatic symptoms, like nervous headache, neuralgia, Um, numbness, restlessness, insomnia, and these have to do with great stress. great stress that goes to the body in order to uh, go away. The organism uh, takes this stress and takes it out to the body with nervous sim in the form of nervous systems uh, symptoms in order to get rid of it. And we may have mostly psoric, but also syphilitic, mainly psoric. Here we have syphilitic. Here we may have psoric or syphilitic. The person again, uh, the person, these are not accompanied so much with fear about health or uh, death, the, the person is not faking, is really suffering, and these symptoms may appear during great stress or during the rest. While in rest, the person, the organism, finds the chance to take it out, take the stress out. It's important to discriminate because according, as I have told you, according to what kind of symptoms do we have, we go to, uh, we are led to the uh, relevant constitutional families. When we deal with phosphor, we talk about neurovegetative symptoms. It's a neurovegetative psoric psychotic constitution.
Each time I analyze a certain constitution, I refer also to a certain theoretical subject like this that is characteristic of that constitution. Because if you don't bind theory with practice, uh, then you don't remember things. They don't stay they don't, in your mind. You don't grasp it. Let's go to phosphor. Phosphor is... Uh, what is the essence of phosphor? As always, in classical miasmatic constitutional homeopathy, we uh, analyze constitutions by focusing on the essence and the psychological profile of, of the person and on the miasmatic aspect. So, what is the miasmatic aspect of phosphor? He is psoric, psoric, then psychotic, and then syphilitic. Mostly psoric, but also psychotic. Phosphor is Psoric, when it comes, uh, let me analyze it. Phosphor is psoric when it comes to intention. ideology and mental content, ideology and ideas. Yet he is psychotic When it comes to expression, expression of thoughts, emotions, and behavior. And he is also psychotic on the physical level. and on the illnesses that he has. So you see, he is psoric as to ide intention, ideology and ideas, and psychotic as to expression and physical level. What defines his dominant miasmatic influence is the intention and the ideology because hierarchically it's higher than the other things, the other levels. So he's predominantly psoic in general, but he has this psychotic expression and influence on the body. It's a combination that we will also find in a very relevant constitution in pulsatilla. Pulsatilla is also psoic in intention, ideology, ideas, and psychotic in expression and physical illness. Mostly, pulsatilla is female. Mostly, phosphor is male but also uh, female. It can be female. It's mostly male, but it can also be female. Pulsatilla is 95% uh, female. And you will see that Pulsatilla suits the female characteristics more than phosphor. 
it's a more female, uh, it's a more of female nature adds to the symptoms and characteristics. While phosphor, phosphor is more closer to the male. So this is the miasmatic aspect of phosphor. Other very important characteristics of phosphor is very uh, altruistic. very uh, social and very uh, compassionate and very sincere very giving and extrovert. So you have a person that because he is very solid, he is altruistic, compassionate and, uh, and because he is psychotic as to expression, he is social and extrovert. Phosphor is like a small, is like a, a small child, is like an adult that has remained a small, good, uh, innocent child. And even in, in old age, it acts like that because he is psychotic to intention, but psychotic, being social and giving, and then an extrovert. So, you like phosphor very much. A, a phosphor individual is very lovable, is very social. Let us analyze each thing of this. You have the characteristics that I will tell you. Let's start from altruistic altruism. Giving and very conscientious these are these positive traits or negative traits someone could easily say that these are very positive traits no, they aren't. Since they are constitutional influences, they are always imbalances. They are always negative traits. How come? Don't confuse the terms. These are traits that are at the extremes. These are not traits, these are not the chosen and uh, conscious behavior of the person. They are traits that are a bit obsessive. Phosphor individual doesn't choose to be altruist, giving, sincere and conscient, conscientious. He cannot help being that, even when 
he should not be in certain cases. That's why from these traits, that's why I call these traits negative, and that's why from these traits, as I will show you, illness will come, imbalance, psychological and physical. All the rubrics that we have in the repertory, all the rubrics that we have in the Materia Medica, either be symptoms or characteristics, are imbalances, are not positive traits, they are negative traits, they are responsible for illness, for imbalance. Let me give you an example. Altruism and giving. If you see a beggar if you sometimes give according to what you see and to the situation to your situation and the, to the situation of others then you act normally if any time you see a beggar, you get angry and you say, go work, what are you doing there? You lazy people. This is imbalance. This is at the upper extremes. If every time you see a beggar, although, you, although it is profound that he is a liar, and that he is faking, you just can't uh, help it uh, and you give money even if you don't have, this is also at the extremes. It is not altruism, uh, chosen uh, behavior, it is an obsessive behavior, you just can't help it. Oh, you get sensitive, you get sentimental, and even if you, even if it is 19% possible that he is a liar, and even if you don't have enough money, and you have loans and so on, you just can't help giving money. Or you have uh, been doing this for years, and whenever you see a beggar, and you know that maybe he is a, a liar, a liar, you uh, uh, want to give, you get angry that uh, you do give or you get angry because you don't give and you feel guilty that you don't give. So you see, either way this is imbalance. When you have uh, anger 3 or 2, this is imbalance. When you have the other extreme, that is uh, being calm or coward, being calm while you should get angry, three or two, this is also imbalance. Both behaviors have one common thing that you don't choose to do them. They are obsessive, in a way, behaviors. They are not free behaviors. You do it automatically, under the influence of the mayas or the constitutions. So you see, phosphorus can't help it being extremely altruistic, and that's why he becomes a victim most of the times. And when he becomes a victim, gradually he develops stress and illness. So remember that all entries in a repertory or in a materia medica, all rubrics are 
imbalances and create lead to illness only because they are at their extremes either up or down. So, we usually say that this is a good person, yet this is not the truth. It is a partial truth. It's better to have one that has uh, some traits that are uh, close, closer to being good than closer to being bad, but nevertheless it's an imbalance. So let's start the scenario, the background, how, the, how disease, how illness develops in a phosphor individual under the influence of, of phosphor constitution. You've got a person that has these traits. Then he becomes the victim. The victim of his parents or of his children or of his companion or of his boss at work or of his colleagues or of his friends or of uh, um, ideological uh, movements such as religion or philosophies or political parties. He becomes a victim. Why? He is psoric and sincere. He believes what others tell him. He is very gullible. Gullible three or two. Because he, ha he is psoric and he has good intentions, he believes and he is giving and sincere, he believes, judging by himself, that all others are so also. And then he is fooled most of the times. They manipulate him all around him. And the closer others <coughs> are to him, the most they take advantage of him. They manipulate him. Especially the syphilitic individuals. His syphilitic mother or father, his syphilitic wife or husband, and so on. So, what does it mean that they take advantage of him? His parents if, if they are syphilitic take advantage of his love and his caring disposition towards them. I have many times seen a syphilitic mother that has this good child, the phosphor child, that does all things in the house because his mothers or his father say oh I'm tired can you do this for me can you do that for me what a good child bravo or he has a syphilitic brother or sister and the parents are also, although they say, what a good child you are, my phosphor child, they take the part and they make discriminations and they are in favor of the syphilitic child. Uh, 
you forceful, forceful son, please, uh, uh, even if his brother starts all the fights and uh, is on fault, they tend to say to the forceful child, okay, uh, leave it, just leave it, uh, don't mind, uh, I know you are right, but uh, go back, because uh, go back, and in order not to have fights, and he is suppressed. Always the good child is the suppressed one when you have syphilitic parents and syphilitic brothers. The same thing goes to the um, uh, to his parents. He may be 45 years old, 55 years old, a son of 55 years old, and his syphilitic mother always uh, he he may have children and his own family, and the syphilitic mother telephones and says, "Oh, I have." pain in my heart uh, and uh, can you come and help me or maybe I should go to the hospital and the first four son although 50 years old and though he has his family and children he leaves his family and children and he goes to help rushes to help his mother and the only thing that his mother wants is to have someone serving her and to have someone doing her will and uh, uh, because she may feel alone and she wants someone to uh, serve her and, or she may uh, don't like his wife his, his son's wife and he wants to uh, separate them and so all the time he uh, calls to her son uh, to be in her house and then the wife reacts and then they fight and then she tells him your wife is not good she doesn't love you she hates me she is not a good mother she is not a good wife and she drives him to get a divorce and then have him completely for her own. Boss, his boss at work and his colleagues, because he is very psoric, sincere and, consci and conscientious, he wants, even if his boss even if he doesn't have a boss, even if his boss is not checking him. Nevertheless, he will do his job very punctually and uh, uh, very meticulously, very good. He wants to be perfect, not because he wants to become a boss not because he is afraid that they will fire him or they will uh, do remarks to him not because he um, is obsessive but because he is very conscientious, very psoric, and he believes that that's what he should do. And most of the times when his colleagues see that he is very conscientious, if they are syphilitic or lazy psychotic, they, uh, in a smart way, they take their jobs and they give it to him. They put it on his back and he, uh, using several excuses, a syphilitic colleague may say, I'm not feeling well uh, today, I have some problems at the house, don't mind, says the phosphor, I will help you, I will help you. He is so eager to help others. Or, uh, 
the syphilitic person will say, uh, I am new here, I don't know how to do this, you are so good at it, can you please help me? And with help, the syphilitic person means, will you do it and let me get lazy? His friends tell him, if they are syphilitic friends, not good friends, they pretend to be very good friends, can you lend me some money? I am in a great need. And then they don't give the money back after some time. And then the forceful individual, being psoric and sensitive, is, is, feels bad to go and ask for his money. He prefers to lose the money. He says to himself and to others, Anyway, I know that he took advantage of me. I get angry sometimes, but then I say, Okay, leave it. The important thing is to have a good heart. This is an excuse in order to justify his imbalance, his weakness, in order to uh, not to become a victim. You see, every constitution, every individual under the influence of a certain constitution knows his weak points deep inside him, but he finds excuses to himself and to others in order to justify this weakness. For example, like Obodimus, I have told you, is coward, but he, pretend, he justifies this, he doesn't accept that he is a coward to others and sometimes to himself, and justifies this cowardness, this cowardice, uh, as of being uh, civilized and calm and not wanting to do fights because fights are dangerous and are not civilized. In the same way, Forceford tries to justify his uh, compulsive altruism, his unbal unbalanced altruism and giving, uh, by saying that, uh, well, Christ said that we should be good no matter what others do, or I am a sensitive guy, I can't help, I am a giving guy, I'm, a, I'm an altruist, I'm a good boy, I'm a good citizen, a good employee, employee, and so on. But others take advantage of him. If he is, because he is sorry, he sincerely believes in ideas, and then priests, uh, gurus, and political uh, politics take advantage of him because he is the one that uh, uh, sincerely believes in a certain ideology, religious, political, philosophical, and so on, and the syphilitic person that are those mostly that are the bosses, uh, are the ones that are in high in a hierarchy at such uh, political parties, religions and philosophies and gurus, uh, they, uh, when they see a, a force for person, they say, oh, what a nice victim, come here. They talk to him about the ideology, they talk to him that he will be the servant of this ideology, uh, the soldier of this ideology, the very good person, he will go to paradise. And so he will serve the society, and by that they have him uh, being advantaged, be, be, he becomes a victim, a great victim. And when he becomes a victim, then problems start. He becomes very anxious, and when he becomes anxious, then we have pathology phase 
A. Uh, first, we have pathology phase A. When we have a victim, we have pathology phase A. And from A, we go to B. This is the state of clinical health. Clinical health. We have no disease. This is the state, the new, the uh, neurovegetative phase, because of the neurovegetative system that is dissolved, the autonomic system, autonomic nervous system, or we could say the panic attacks, if we use a modern term. Panic attacks phase. During the state of clinical health, we have a person that doesn't have 